Welcome to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. My name is Jeremy Wiseman. I'm joined by Jerry Karaya. Thank you for joining us here during this holiday season. We're very excited to, hopefully, uh, there's going to be a lot to cover here as usual. I don't know if we're going to be able to squeeze it in. Hopefully, we will squeeze it in. Um, we want to talk about the trends, some of these trends that we've seen throughout 2023 with the get woke, go broke, and how we're seeing that the trend change dramatically. Um, we're also going to talk about an incoming gold standard or the potential of an incoming gold standard. A lot of things moving towards real assets and uh, the, the world of the real and also talk about where the precious metals are going to lead to because of the supply deficits that we're currently experiencing. But let's start, Jerry, with how we're doing so far the month, the week, the year in precious metals. I saw gold was up 10% so far this year in Canadian dollars. Solid performance. Hopefully we, we continue that strong performance here towards the last week of the year. Silver in Canadian dollars, even. Even Stephen, as far as, uh, as, as far as I saw today. Any comments? Silver up 3%, though, in U.S. dollars, Jeremy. But I like to keep it in Canadian. In Canadian, yes, in our terms. It's flat on the year. Silver to gold ratio is still really high at about 84 to 1. So it signals that silver has a lot of room to move up. Gold is showing resilience. It did bottom out closer to the 2000 mark. Now we're moving up into the mid 2000s, closing out the re week off really strong. Canadian dollar just roaring up. Com remember that the Canadian dollar is a commodities driven currency. So the commodity space is catching a bid. So closing out the year very strong. And, um, you know, we're positioned for some, some great things in 2024. Yeah, and I think it has to be reiterated that the precious metals is not a short-term market especially in silver gold as you can see this year's a typical example it just kind of keeps marching forward silver could have three years where it does nothing and then in the last two months of that fourth year it could zoom up like absolute crazy now stick with us because the numbers what's happening beneath the surface in the precious metals market specifically silver is so super exciting that it belies the, what you're seeing on the price. And I think that's also part of the whole deal, Jerry. You know, you could call me a conspiracy theorist, but I believe that they want to paint the charts and keep the prices low because if you have control over a printing press, the last thing you want is people owning something physical and not being in, not playing your game. I think it's something that we actually have a lot in common with the crypto world. The idea is, we want freedom. And if we, if we look at our bank accounts and we say, what is in there? Is that, is that cash in there? Is that quote unquote money in there? Could I take out a hundred grand in cash right now? No. The answer is no. So what is in the account? What is that? It's a liability to the bank and that's it. And interestingly, just looking back on the year, Jerry, do you remember what was going on with Credit Suisse? <laughs> this year, going back to January, they were losing hundreds of millions of dollars into the billions and had to be saved. Mm -hmm. This is the financial system we're dealing with when you have, and here's a perfect example. Look at our, our financial system could be summed up by Olivia Chow. Beggar cup, can't mm -hmm. stop spending. Beggar cup, can't stop spending right? I'm going to raise taxes on everybody. This is the government system and the finance. We're going to raise mm -hmm. taxes on everyone, ideologically go after woke things, but we can't afford any of it. Mm -hmm. And this is why we believe moving into the next year, it's all about understanding reality. So let's jump right into yeah. it. Okay. So the <clears throat> story broke a few weeks back. Um, actually, I guess a quarter um, during the summertime that that uh, Costco was selling gold and uh, very limited supply. It was always sold out. But the uh, chief financial officer, I believe, came out, said, you know what, during the summer, it was such a great uh, seller. Such a great seller. We sold $100 million worth. Sounds like a big number. It's actually not that big a number in the gold market, not if you think about it. And plus, obviously, it's because you're limiting supply and there's only so much you can get your hands on. Nonetheless, 
it proved to be a very profitable thing. Yeah. A very profitable thing. In a year where we've had so many woke things happen that have destroyed companies, Disney goes woke, can't sell a movie. Bud Light. Bud Light. Um, Victoria's Secret. You name the company. O over and over again, all of these woke ideals have turned out to be absolutely disastrous. And it just kind of goes to show that ideology is one thing. Making people pay is another. Mm -hmm. What's going to get people to buy? And th this Costco thing shows that there's an undercurrent of reality and people are saying, I like that. That's real. And that get, that's a vote against all of this ideological nonsense. So now they're not the only company doing that, right? Well, regarding Costco, it was definitely a huge test. They tested the waters. It was a huge success. And they're going to continue with the success. And they shifted their attention now, Jeremy, to the silver market. And we understand how small that silver market is. So to have maybe $100 million in silver sales, I'm expecting a major silver squeeze. And other companies, other smart industrious companies like Costco who jumped on board are going to be following and doing the exactly the same thing. And the demand is there. When, we, when the people see that homelessness is on an all-time, well, the, the homeless is in the U.S., it's a 12% surge since 2020. And you have homelessness here in, in, in Toronto. Um, Wall Street Silver just posted something this morning regarding the lineup at food banks. Two million people, employed people, lining up at food banks over the holidays. So as we're in, you know, counting our blessings over the Christmas season, just remember generosity, try to give to the food banks, do as much as possible. But we're definitely seeing a shift and the shift into precious metals will be one that will change situations for people. Worrying about the next, you know, your next payment, your next monthly payment, your next mortgage payment. The silver and gold market, especially in the silver being so undervalued and where the market is going to go, you will generate wealth, you will generate profits, you will make money in the market, and you will pass something on to your, your the next generations. This is what it's all about. And it's it's basically something that, again, you should always have in a portfolio because if you go back to 2000 when uh, gold was trading in and around $250 an ounce, it gets up to $2,000 an ounce close to it in, in 2011. We're back up at those highs now, but it's the bottom. It's the bottom of the market. And how do you know that? Take a look at silver. The all-in cost of production on silver right now is just under $20 an ounce. So you have a deficit right now in silver where they're mining something like 870 plus million ounces a year but we're using over a billion well over a billion a year and that's going into your refrigerator into your electric vehicle into your solar power into your computer into your cell phone into your light switches you know they need to they need to build um, a, a ridiculous amount of houses in Canada well do you know how much silver is going to go into that we just talked about the appliances what about the light switches what about everything else so you need silver and you're mining it at, at just under $20 and you are in a deficit. Eventually you hit that wall. Mm -hmm. You are going to hit that wall. And unlike ideological things, right, that we could go on about where they could scare you half to death with all the things that are going on, but this is a real situation. Yes. This is real. It will hit the wall. Yep. And when it does, the price is going to spike ridiculously higher. And until the all-in sustaining cost on silver stays at $50, $100 an ounce for years, and that becomes the bottom, you're not going to you're not going to see that deficit change which means the prices of of what goes into those goods are going to rise no matter what mm -hmm. it is going to happen so why not take advantage of it now and back in 1980 it was one of the largest wealth transfers in history in history we're talking about real things it's not a speculative act it is the fact that we need it for every day use and the world is growing and the world is changing and there's mm -hmm. all new advancements and advancements in technology. technology and we're going to need more and more of it. And you, if you think, well, oh, it'll get better. We'll, we'll need less of it in, in the solar power, but they'll build more of it. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to use more of it more and more and more. It is going to be absolutely explosive. And the more they keep it down, the more you have a year where it does nothing, 
the more excited you should be about where it's headed. And we're buying in at the lows, at the lows. And one, one last quick little point yeah. on that. You know, last week you talked about Jim Rickards and he, he was talking about here's the path to $15,000 gold. And one of the things he, he brought up, and I've, he's mentioned this before in the past, is look, to go from 1,000 to 2,000, it's 100% gain. And to go from 2,000 to 3,000, 50% gain. And then it goes lower and lower and easier, easier and easier and easier. So when you look at something like a Bitcoin in, in the 50,000 range Canadian, you go, well, it's got to go to 100,000 to double your money. Whereas gold is only has to go from two to four. And when you compare that to the debts, and then you start to look at silver, which is even more undervalued, right? Silver's only got to go from 25 to 50, mm -hmm. 50 to 100. We're talking, we're talking double digits here. That's it. It's such a powerful, such a powerful place to, to put money right now where it's so incredibly undervalued in the realm of the real. So if that makes sense, if it makes sense to you mm -hmm. to have the, the, the world of the real in your portfolio, then give us a call because that's what we do best. We deal in physical precious metals. We help you put it into a registered account. You can own it, control it. It's fully allocated to you. You are the custodian of your product. Um, you can buy and sell on a phone call. If you decide, hey, I want to take it out of my RSP, you could take delivery of it. It's your physical product. There is no counterparty risk. So give us a call. We'll show you how to do it. The number, 18778Silver. The website, guildhallwealth.com. More to come on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show. The number, 18778Silver. The website, guildhallwealth.com. A few ways to get involved in the market. You can just buy it direct can do what you what you did at Costco. It's great. A um, couple ounces of gold, probably never sell it, just becomes part of your net worth and continues to grow and grow and grow. You know, Jerry, when I started with Guildhall, I had a goal. I wanted to get up to 10, 15 ounces of gold in my safety deposit box. And I thought, hey, if I, if I have to go to my safety deposit box, I mean, drive my car, talk to the advisor, get the key, go into the private room, pull out the gold, put it back, get back in the car, drive to sell it, et cetera. It's a lot of steps. It's not as easy as the phone call. We, we, go, we always say, hey, you can have liquidity, right? The vault, pick up the phone, buy and sell on a phone call. That's great, that's convenient. But to have it in a safety deposit box was, in my mind, I thought, if I'm gonna pull out those 10, 15 ounces of gold, either things are really, really bad Right, kind of Jason Bourne-ish, right? Let's let's go get our, our our gun, handgun, passport, and our gold, right? You always see that in the movies. Yeah. Or I have an incredible opportunity that I have to sell this asset, right? Mm -hmm. I have to get this asset to cash because I've got a great opportunity. And I never sold those ounces. They've only continued to rise in value. I've added more to the portfolio, obviously. But the, the point here is that the longer you hold it, the better it performs and the more of the base of your portfolio that you have. I do stocks, right? I'm not, we're, we're not advising people here. We're just telling you what we do. Yep. Um, we own stocks, sure. But I love having that, that mm -hmm. base in the portfolio and then you know having built from there. So just wanted to, to put that out there. I wonder if society is going to move towards that too, because we're starting to get a lot of little little notes here and there, little headlines here and there. We know what the bricks are doing. They're adding a ton, literally, of <laughs> physical gold to their holdings. They continue to acquire it. They continue to make bilateral trade movements. But now we're starting to see that there is a possibility and murmurs about a gold standard, returning to a gold standard. Even Max Bernier put out a, a, a post recently, I think it was on his Instagram, basically saying at, at some point you have to go back. Mm -hmm. There is no have solution. To, there's no solution. So tell us some of these murmurs that are going on and are they, gonna, are they going to go from embers to break out into a full out fire and flame of gold standard talk? Well, where, well, there is smoke. Where there is smoke, there is fire, and we're we're heading towards this massive change. And I've been following this for a while. Um, sound money. I'm a sound money advocate, so we have to follow the sound money advocate uh, the groups. 
And, you know, just last week, it was a U.S. Congressman, Alex Mooney, who questioned the Federal Reserve, wrote some letters. And now who Alex Mooney is, he's been a leader on sound money issues in Congress in the U.S. He's introduced reforms such as the Gold Reserves Transparency Act, the Monetary Metals Tax Neutrality Act, the Gold Standard Restoration Act. So that would be the bringing the gold standard back. So they have an act ready to go. If something happens in the system, they can bring that act out and pass it as law almost overnight if something, if, if the need be. But he's questioning the Federal Reserve in regards to repatriation of gold because back in 2013, um, Germany, so Germany requested to have their gold returned. Um, so these are the questions that were brought up by Mooney. You know, has the Federal Reserve in New York repatriated any gold to foreign nations this year? And these questions have to be responded to to the congressman by January of two th next year, January fifteenth next year. And if so, if if countries have received their medals, their gold bullion, which countries and how much? And how much gold is the Federal Reserve vaulting for foreign nations? And does the Fed, New York Fed statement, November 9th, um, prove that you did not intervene in the metals markets because they prove that they intervene in the currency markets? So these are huge questions that all they are, to me, in, in my, my opinion, is just shedding light. Shedding light where they don't want the light to be shone. But why do you think that is? Why do you think that you have a congressman seemingly out of the blue? I mean, obviously, they're not going to talk about this on CNBC. But why do you think a congressman is bringing this up all of a sudden, seemingly all of a sudden? I remember the, the Ron Paul um, you know, interactions between him and Bernanke, you know, he'd ask about money and Bernanke would say, well, it's just a, a legacy, you know, <laughs> it's a pet rock, but I don't know why banks want to still hold on to it. it like, me. come on, buddy. <laughs> um, but why do you think a congressman out of the blue just says, you know what, I want to know who you're giving your gold back to, who you're holding gold on onto for, and how much gold you you have? Yeah, these congressmen and it's quite know, the survey. They they're analyzing their analysis is based on all the macro economics, so they're looking at the big picture. And what these congress, what this congressman has always done is looked at the moves as central banks around the world continue to scoop up gold bullion. Even countries are acquiring silver bullion in their reserves at record rates. And obviously we're following these trends. Mooney is following that trend. So obviously you're asking these pressing pressing questions about gold because this is a national security issue. You need to have gold in your reserves in the event of any financial calamity. And with the potential of rate cuts that are coming down the pike next year, they have to be ready. People have to be ready. The US dollar must be ready. And this is the trend. And now there is murmuring that the Germany's Bundesbank, look at Germany. Germany is just, you know, full woke, you know, shutting well, off the coal. And the, the economy there is in, is in shambles. Well, they, so, I think they reach the precipice because it seems like things are changing there. Yeah, across Europe, right? we're noticing things that are changing. They want to. Sure. They want to stop all the migration. They're they're looking for ways to deport at this point, and they're looking for ways to up the coal plants and oil plants because they know what happened last year, and they just can't. They can't do it again this Quick year. Reversal. And you know, you you see, you really you, you can admire the people there. You look at the farmers in France. They're <laughs> they're putting <laughs> manure onto the onto the steps of, of Parliament. There, could you imagine? The, the farmers in Canada, if they did the same thing, how quickly they would have to get rid of uh, the carbon tax here. Mm -hmm. If you had that sort of, you know, another An anger. Uh, yeah, another almost another convoy in a way. Yeah, it, it, would, it would definitely, you know, for Canadians being being Canadian, we're going to, you know, take a, lot, a little bit more for Canadians. We're, not, to do we're nowhere like near that. the precipice yet. <laughs> not at all. But uh, right now. Well, at wait, coal, actually, I should say that's wrong. We're very close, but we're, we're not seeing the people in the streets yet. Yeah. That mm -hmm. comes next. That's for sure. Well, gold right now, just to sum up what, what the Federal Reserve is trying to hide from the congressmen, the, they will have to answer some major questions about the gold uh, stash and the reserves in, in the U.S. Well, overall, the reason why this is being focused on, gold is currently trading at all-time high in almost all currencies. 
So we can't ignore that. Something's going on with the currency. And now market insiders claim that Germany's Bundesbank right now, again, is seeking to repatriate some of its gold vaulted within the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Do they have the gold? So what would you say to, to people who say, well, you can't go back to a gold standard because there's not enough gold? That's correct. There's always enough gold at the right price. And the real issue is debt. And when you have trillions and now quadrillions of derivatives of toxicity in the system that's going to bring the market down, you have to have gold, but you have to have gold at the right price. And this is where a revaluation, Europe has gold revaluation accounts. This means that gold can be repriced at higher prices, multiplied by the amount of tons that you have. Because if you use 8,000 tons at today's price in US dollars at average $2,000 an ounce, you maybe have maybe $260 billion worth of gold. That's not enough to back up the system. We're but, talking quadrillions. You'll have to have gold in around the fifteen to twenty thousand dollar mark. Yes, now you have enough to back up maybe ten percent of your uh, ten. You know, have collateral maybe of ten percent, or revalue it higher. Then you have fifty percent debt. This is a massive refinancing of all the debt. So then, gold at two thousand quote unquote all time highs is is nothing compared to what it would have to be revalued to 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 help get rid of the debts and that's correct and you know that's we may not even have to have a revaluation according to jim rickards this is going to happen Fifteen thousand gold is going to happen within a couple of years and he's using the charts from the last two super cycles in gold so these are very very long-ranged very strong charts going going back 30 years we'll see it again so uh, one of the things that i i see uh, a ch not necessarily a challenge with it's actually a, a benefit is that gold at fifteen thousand dollars it, it it's quite the barrier to entry right you'd have to come up with fifteen thousand um, dollars to buy one single ounce of gold you know you could buy half an ounce you could buy you know 10 gram bar or five gram bar or whatnot but generally speaking your your barrier to entry is going to be quite huge you don't have that with cryptocurrencies. You could you, the barrier to entry is still going to remain two hundred dollars, a hundred bucks, like whatever, as long as it's bigger than the the exchange fee. Mm -hmm. But in gold, in the or I should say in the bullion market, you have an alternative, which is why they had a bimetallic standard, where you could say, okay, but I can buy silver that's currently at an eighty-five to one ratio, and silver right now is only twenty-five dollars. So if Gold goes to fifteen thousand, and silver goes to three hundred dollars an ounce. The barrier to entry is still only three hundred dollars. I think at that point, it's it's yeah, it's three hundred dollars an ounce. But divide that by you know three hundred dollars divided by thirty one point one grams to make that ounce. That gram of silver is ten dollars, right? So you still can buy, and people do sell. I don't they know, buy grams, can, grams of silver. I've oh, seen. Have on. you seen the combi packs? Well, uh, but there. but but there's such a such a limited supply. Like correct, you know. Here here's something here's something to consider for anyone who's thinking about timing the the physical silver market. We've had we've had three or four major rushes in the precious metals market where the retail sector got zapped. Right, you had the silver squeeze, you had the beginning of uh, COVID, you had um, the. Uh, freedom convoy when they cut off people's accounts people were running into the market and the first thing to go were 10 ounce bars of silver right people want to come in they want to buy um, they want to buy 50 10 ounce bars of silver and there's not that many 10 ounce bars of silver around so that's the first thing to go so if you're looking to take a position and you've never purchased before you want to start with some 10 ounce bars you want to start with some of the smaller products that are going to be liquid for you. And then eventually you don't need the smaller products either. And one of the ways that I, I explain this to people is if, if you have five 100 ounce bars of silver, each bar that you sell off is 20% of your position. Yep. If you have 10 100 ounce <clears throat> bars, it's 10% of your position. That's, that, that's okay. That's easy. Right? Do you need less than 10% to sell off at any given time? And so on and so forth. So the larger the, the, larger the 
investment into physical bullion, the less you need smaller products. But if you're going to put in five thousand, ten thousand dollars, you need to start with small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's all. I, have I to agree. Say. I agree. So um, we've got to go to break. Quick vote: Do you see a gold standard coming? Yes. Why? There is no solution, Jeremy. It is the bottom of Exter's pyramid, right? So we have to appreciate that everything is going to be based on the reality of the world and that physical gold and silver have been around for thousands of years. They are trust where there is no other trust. And this is why eventually you are going to need a gold standard of transparency to bring trust back to the system. You can get gold into your own portfolio by giving us a call at one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. And we've got more to come here on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. Very easy to get involved in the market. You know, we, we, we recommend... We're not advisors, speak to those you trust, but we recommend physical precious metals, actual hold in your hand, physical precious metals. That means acquiring a few ounces of gold, some hundred ounce bars of silver. If you could build up to a place where maybe you need to store that and insure it so that it's safe and that you have ease of liquidity, you, you put it in a vault where it's fully allocated, fully segregated. You have full ownership, no counterparty risk. You can go to the vault and do what? hold it in your hand. So guess what? If you can't hold it, you don't own it. And we take that even further to registered accounts. You know, Jerry, we've talked about this before, but if you're getting 8% plus a year on your gold holdings, why would you not want to have that in your registered account on a long-term basis and then put in 20, 30, 40% into silver for those day for those moments in time which have happened where silver just bursts out, breaks out, and makes a massive, massive run, which is what we're expecting. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you want to have that in your portfolio as a base? Exactly. You know, and what's 1% storage on that? I mean, people are paying, it amazes me every day, I see people paying 2.5% management expense ratios, but because they don't see the money coming out of their account, they think it doesn't get paid. <laughs> It's the same thing as saying universal basic income. I want universal basic income. Okay, who's going to pay for that? And are you going to get to ask for a raise when the inflation hits further? Because that money just got invented into existence and no one worked for it. Mm -hmm. So someone's got to pay for it, which is me, which is you, which is you, the listener. Correct. You pay for all of this. Tax is theft. You can avoid reality, but you can't avoid the consequences of avoiding reality. And there was a great quote that came out this year that the economy of imaginary wealth is being inevitably replaced by the economy of real and hard assets. And this is coming from a leader of, the, of one of the BRICS nations. Let's just say that. Amazing. The economy of the imaginary wealth is being inevitably replaced by the economy of real and hard assets. We are moving towards reality ideology is going to fall by the wayside, right? Um, common sense is not so common, <laughs> but it's getting there. And when we, just to review, when we look at Costco and we see that people are making common sense moves and Costco says, wow, look, common sense makes money. Let's keep doing it. Yep. Um, even even uh, jewelry companies are realizing, well, wait a minute, white diamonds are quite volatile. But if we have colored diamonds in our inventory, those are not volatile and rising all the time. It would make sense to our shareholders that we hold an asset that is consistent That's and right. that doesn't have volatility. And gold is the same way. People will say, uh, you don't want to own gold. It's volatile. Oh, really? You want to just broad stroke that one? Because in Canadian dollars, there's been two down years in 15 years. Give me more. That's right. <laughs> right? So... Um, when we look at the realm of reality versus the the real, we feel that the real is coming. Yeah, the shift is on all of the all of the movements away from financials. Anything that has been propped up, the financial markets, currency markets, anything that's been propped up, 
through stimulus and money printing will go back to a mean and shifting out of risky assets the extras pyramid is shifting into the realm of real and hard assets that are finite and why wouldn't you want to have your base and protect your wealth entirely outside of a failing currency doesn't matter what currency they're all failing they're all going down with your wealth with it rsp season's coming up what are you going to do with your rsp now is the time to consider the shift as the world is shifting away from financial paper assets, time to soberly look at things and shift along with the world and outside of the digital banking system. Your money, your wealth is worth more than ones and zeros on a binary code. And the 2023 was a stellar year for gold. 2024 will be the best year for silver. And we're seeing shifts go go on in the silver market too, um, and the gold market because we're seeing shifts in who controls the pricing. We've had the pricing controlled by the Comex essentially, and entities of North America and and London for decades now, and we're starting to see that shift with the power rise of the BRICS nations. Tell us a little bit about that. The control that the BRICS wield as far as their GDP is concerned, these economies outperform and outshine the West, hands down. They have already communicated and they have already set up means to trade in their local currencies, settle in their local currencies, have precious metals settled in their local currencies. This is the move of the future, not towards a one world currency. These are trading in your national currencies, empowering nations is what the BRIC nations are doing. And with regards to the precious metals industry and markets, they know that he who has the gold makes the rules. This is, the re this is how they have all this momentum. The momentum to open up exchanges. We have the Indian Bullion Exchange. We have the Shanghai Gold Exchange. And the, over the last month and month and a half, we've been talking about the disparity between the Shanghai price and the London price. Why is it $40 premium over there and, and $40 less over here? Well, the capitulation has happened with the London Metals Exchange. They had to switch. They had to start pricing their precious metals contracts not based on London pricing, but they're basing their contracts now on who? The Shanghai price. Shanghai came out and said, world, it's time to start looking at our price inst instead of the New York and London price. They came out and said it before they said they wanted to open the Shanghai exchange to complement the industry, to maybe bring some transparency. Well, no, they're actually changing their tune and they're saying, the, the time to ch have a price change, a change of batter, and look at the our price for gold and silver because it will be much, much higher because they have the gold. The comics and the London markets, we know they fill their bags with rocks and sands. They don't have the metals. Where Where is the gold? Do you have the gold? And do you have enough gold to back up your contracts? Absolutely not. So this is a huge shift and the bricks are in control. Follow the yellow brick road because all roads lead to precious metals and even silver. Silver will be that will be that metal and that is going to be so important, not just in solar or fuel cell technology because Toyota is leading the charge on that, which is, which is superior than electric. And as the world wants to move towards a woke electric for 2023 and have only electric cars in the street, it's not sustainable, number one, and it, it won't work because the world's moving in another direction. He who owns the gold makes the rules. And in a world where money is becoming worthless every day and people are realizing that the currency is worthless, he who owns the gold makes the rules. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. More to come on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver and the website, guildhallwealth.com. Earlier in the show, we talked about the biggest wealth transfer in history coming. And we need, in the, the new economy, and everything that's coming up next because there's going to be big big changes i don't see i don't think anyone listening sees that what we're currently experiencing specifically in canada can last much longer that we're going to go this much longer without major major change and that there is a common sense revolution that people are starting to realize what the the realm of reality is versus ideologies etc 
And so I wanted to put that into a, a real context, Jerry. 15,000 ounces of silver would cost today roughly 540,000 Canadian. Now, I know not every Canadian has it, but I just wanted to demonstrate that even people who have the luxury to do this, of what the benefit's going to be to you and all of the businesses you could own and the people you could employ and all of the great things you could do with the profits that come about from that. Just over half a million dollars, you'd have 15,000 ounces of silver. Now, what if Jim Rickards is not right? What if we only go to 7,000? And I've seen that a lot okay. over the yep. over the last couple of years. Projections of saying, look, over the next seven, eight years, we should be able to get to six, $7,000 an ounce. $7,000 an ounce gold, we hit what we hit in 2011, which was just a 35 to 1 ratio. So none of this 16 to 1 historic ratio, none of this Mike Maloney going past that to 1 to 1 or the other way. But it will. No, no, no. I'm being, okay, but I'm going to be ultra, ultra conservative here. Fair. $7,000 an ounce gold, 35 to 1 ratio, that gets you $200 an ounce silver, which turns 540000 into $3 million. At which point we... At which point you want to bring your portfolio size all the way back down to a 10% holding of precious metals and take, and you probably still own $540,000 worth of metals, but it would only be worth a very small fraction of your overall portfolio. And then you can go in and pick up a lot of things on the cheap, whether it's real estate, whether it's stocks, and, and you can see these markets move in opposite cycles. So. We're happy to run the numbers with you on all of these different ratios. These ratios are a great, a great way for you to understand value, that it's not necessarily about a specific price of silver. The $200 price was basically a result of understanding the ratios and the values. Which are historic. Yeah, you're not looking necessarily saying, well, I want to sell at 200 or I want to sell at 205 or 106. It's, it's what are the ratios at and how do I know that I'm buying that I have the maximum purchasing power on my on my silver. So half a million dollars, 15,000, you could turn that into 3 million dollars. That's pretty good. Absolutely. And as and this is a this is the potential narrative for us as the the market and mainstream's narrative right now is this soft landing narrative bust. After each rate cut, a recession follows that is that how that is how history has shown shown the reaction to rate cuts it's not okay well they're gonna print exorbitant amount of money so therefore my stock markets are gonna go up in price the stock market exuberance is because of the currency under that stock market is dying or dead remember what happened in Venezuela with a two hundred thousand dollar stock market gain Meanwhile, their currency, the Bolivar, was dying, was dead. So this is, this is what we're dealing with. Isn't that happening in Turkey? That is exactly what happened in Turkey. A hyperinflation, a G20 nation, to suggest that this cannot happen in Canada, very naive thinking because Turkey, a very, once a very strong economy, is, you know, they're, they're, they're suffering right now. So much so that the central bank governor she had to move back home. Now, she, she was a Goldman Sachs employee, you know, Ivy League, econ economics, um, you know. Whiz. Uh, whiz, genius in, in terms of Keynesian economy, e economics. But she had to move back home, Jeremy, saying that the cost of living are way too high. I got to move back with mom and pop. And interestingly enough, they had an interview with Christian Freeland this week, I think on CTV or a, a sort of mainstream media, and they said, how is, how is inflation affecting you personally? And she said, well, I live around the house from a church that has, um, that has a food bank, and I see the lineups. Yes. So does that, do the lineups just disturb you, or do you realize that it's because of your policies that you have created this? The, the interviewer didn't go there. I think I think Freeland realized she just dug a hole for herself, and so then she just tr she pivoted to, you know, uh, the work that they're putting in the church. They're so great, you know, the people who donate to the church. It's so great. Canadians are so great at coming together, a and you're just sitting there going, you're just sitting there thinking, this is you're such an ideological mess, mm -hmm. right? I've used that word a lot, but just because there's a difference between 
the thought of communism and then the reality of communism. Right. And socialism is just one step away, you know. And if everything was so great, I mean, look at uh, and I don't mean to get on a soapbox, but we've had three years to fix the health system, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's not fixed. Nothing's no. fixed. So they take the money and they spend it in crazy places, taxes, theft, and it's time to protect your wealth. And you need a way to get over that hump. And precious metals have proven that time and time again. So we're going to be rooted in reality by having physical precious metals as part of our portfolio. Not the whole thing. It's not a panacea. But it's a great way. It's a great first step. And it's a great base to a portfolio. Absolutely. This is the the year to do it. Get that gold. Get the physical gold and your physical silver in your hands or in your portfolio. And you know how to do it. You get in touch with Guildhall. You tell your friends and family members over the Christmas break. Tell them to get in touch with Guildhall. We offer referrals. We're going to be offering an affiliate program for you guys for you to make money over the holidays. And we want to grow together. And we're going to grow together in precious metals. So thank you so much for tuning in. And if you've missed a show, check us out on YouTube. Check out some of the articles that we're posting up on X and uh, thank you you know for a great year thank you for joining us throughout the year and listening to the show and the comments that come in throughout the year on the show and and uh, questions that you want to hear answered keep them coming because we love it we love the community that we've created here with the real money show so just want to thank you again um, give be uh, be charitable this this year this is a, a year where we all particularly need to be giving if you have it and want to thank you everyone again for joining us here on the real money show and can't we wait to speak to you next week here on the real money show on 640 toronto